What's going on guys? Nick Foy here from AskNickFoy.com. Welcome to today's YouTube video. We're going to be going over different tools I use in my online business that I would recommend you use as well. So the very first tool I use in my business that I want to highlight today is called Clicky. Clicky Analytics. You can go to Clicky.com. And what it is, is it's similar to Google Analytics, but it's a platform that gives you data about your website. So you just install a little bit of code or they even have the Clicky plugin you can install on a WordPress website. And you would just go into your preferences tab here and you're gonna copy paste the site ID and the site key into that plugin on WordPress. Once it's connected to Clicky, it starts tracking analytics. So we can see here for the month of May 2019, one of my websites got 44,885 visitors and they took 63,600 actions. So when you're thinking about Google Analytics data, this would be the same as users and page views. They just call it visitors and actions and we can see that on average, each visitor visited 1.4 pages. All right, we can also see total time, 82 days spent. You can see average time per visit. You can see bounce rate. So I like the basics, it just gives you a quick overview so you can see how many people are coming to your website each week, each month, each year, depending on how you filter it. So up here's the filter. I currently just have it set to the month. If you wanna connect multiple websites, you can quickly navigate back and forth between websites to open up different, you know, browser, uh, different views of those different websites and then you can reset the different timelines for each of those as well. You also see a quick overview up here of how many visitors and actions you've had on the current day. And you can see currently online on your website. So I've got four people on that website right now. So that's some other things that you can get quick access to. But overall, it's just the dashboard, how it's nicely organized. Everything's all on one page. So it's a lot less confusing than Google Analytics where you gotta hop in and out of all these different tabs and pages. I like how it's just a summary dashboard where I can get the basics, I can see a visitor chart, so I can see day by day how my traffic spikes were. Then we've got the content section, so I can see some of my best performing articles. I can see where they're coming from when they click on links. I can see which domains are sending me traffic, so a lot of Pinterest traffic, some coming from pay Facebook and YouTube. We can also see recent, we can see unique, we can see outgoing links, so what are links are people clicking? These are probably gonna be going out to like Amazon that I'm linking to to try to earn some affiliate income. Uh, I've also linked out to my store where I sell different training programs. So that's getting a lot of clicks as well. So I can see which products my traffic is most interested in that they're clicking out to. So there's a lot of cool things you can do with Clicky to learn about your traffic, to see what's working, what's not working. You can get conversion rates. You can see traffic sources. So a lot of search engine Google traffic as well as social media like Pinterest. Uh, and then again, you can see locations like cities, countries, things like that. So it's all organized nicely in a simple dashboard for you. That's why I'd recommend Clicky Analytics. All right, the next tool is Google Analytics. So it does also have a home tab here, which has different information. So I can see a graph of views, visitors by day. I can see traffic channels. Uh, where again, you can kind of look at this chart here, but it's kind of hard to read without hovering over each one. You've got source slash medium, you've got referral traffic. As we scroll down here, we can see how active users are over time, uh, user retention rates. So Google Analytics is real more geeky, scientific data. I mean, it's very, you know, more advanced, detailed stuff. You gotta really know how to use Google Analytics to get the most out of it. Uh, but the main reason really to use Google Analytics is to look at conversions. Uh, so you can set up different goals, you can give those goals value and you can look at different conversion rates. Uh, so you're able to see how well your traffic's converting because there's really no point in using anything else in the analytics softwares other than you know looking at, at traffic and conversion rates because that's the whole goal with your website is to get people to your website and then get them completing some sort of goal, whether that's you know joining an email list, buying a product, or maybe clicking an outbound link to another resource you're trying to send them to that's gonna make you money somehow, like an affiliate link. So you've gotta have some way that you know people are making uh, decisions and goals on completions on your website and you wanna track those conversion rates using the Google Analytics software to you know look at what's going on with your traffic so you can better optimize it. All right, staying course with different analytic tools, the third one is the Google Search Console. So it's very similar, 
Uh, it's also another Google tool, except the difference is it's solely based around Google search. That's why it's called the Google Search Console. So it basically tracks how your website's doing in Google search. You can get those analytics inside of Anal Google Analytics. You can connect the two. You can also see under the acquisition tab all the different traffic coming from Google search, but Google search console lets you dive deeper into click through rates, average position that your blog posts and pages are ranking, as well as impressions versus clicks. So what you can do with Google search console is scroll through all your different pages that you currently have published on your website, and they're gonna be showing up in Google. And they're not necessarily gonna be on the first page of Google, but some of them are on the first page of Google already for different keyword terms. And that's how you're getting these impressions and clicks to your website from Google. But what you can do is look at the click through rate and any website that's getting keyword phrases that are less than 5% click through rates, you can go back and optimize those websites for those keywords by adding those keywords into the blog post. So one thing that's cool is if we go down here, I'm gonna go to an example you know, page of mine. So we're gonna click on a page here. We're gonna do the five golf putting drills from at home. So currently this web page in the last 28 days has had 6,700 impressions, which has resulted in 824 clicks. That's an average click through rate of 12.3%. So that's pretty good. Now what I can do is I can actually go into the queries tab when I scroll down here, and it's gonna show me all the different queries that this page is getting attention from. So I'm getting clicks and impressions and I can see click through rates. What I'm gonna do here is look at click through rates and if I notice there's a keyword, maybe I'm getting less than 5% click through rate, which I haven't seen so far. Let's go ahead and optimize this down here. Uh, let's include 100 results. So as we keep scrolling here, we're gonna find one eventually. So 1.7% for putting tips. So this is a keyword I'm getting less than 5% click through rate on. I'm only getting five clicks even though I'm getting 288 impressions. So what I could do is I could try to optimize that article around this keyword a little bit more by adding in another section for this keyword. So we can make the article more in depth, we can make it longer, adding in these additional keywords. So I'm gonna go through here and make a list of all these different keywords that I'm, I'm getting clicks for, but I'm not getting you know enough clicks considering how many impressions I'm getting. So the click-through rate is low. And I'm gonna go through here, pick out all those different keywords. We've got putting practice, it's only at a 2.9%. Indoor putting games at 4.3%. So I'm just gonna build a list of these keywords that I'm not getting very high click-through rates for. And I'm gonna go try to figure out how to implement them into the article so that we can start the article ranking more for these different terms. And that's how you're gonna boost traffic to your website for existing content you've already published. That way you don't have to worry about creating new content all the time. You can just go back and optimize old content by improving your articles, making them more in depth, making them longer guides by adding in additional sections for additional keywords that are relevant to that same topic. So these different putting keywords are all still relevant to the article that's based around indoor golf. All right, so that's the tip for using Google Search Console is just to analyze your web pages and different keywords you're ranking for and figuring out how you can make your content better to try to increase your click-through rate and then you're gonna get more clicks to your website and that's more traffic where then you can analyze that traffic inside of Google Analytics and inside of Clicky to figure out what's converting, what blog posts are doing well in terms of converting into customers and sales. So combine those three tools, work well together, they're important in my business, I think they'll be important in yours. Now let's move on to our fourth tool called ConvertKit. You don't have to use ConvertKit, there's other substitutes out there like MailChimp, MailerLite, Aweber, I'm sure you've heard a few of these, Infusionsoft, Constant Contact. These are all email service providers. So ConvertKit is an email software that I build my email list. So let me go ahead and log in and show you. So we've talked about using Google Analytics and the different analytic tools to track conversions. One thing you can track conversions of is email subscribers. So you get all this traffic coming to your website every month. The next step is to get them onto an email list so that you can remarket to them because if they just come to your website one time and they leave and never come back, that's wasted traffic. Instead, you wanna be able to stay in contact, build a relationship with them, provide value to them, and maybe down the road they become a customer. So in order to keep in touch, you wanna have an email list. So we can create different email forms using ConvertKit. So they've got this forms and landing pages tab here. So we click into that and that's where we're gonna create a brand new email capture form that goes on your website. 
Basically, it can embed anywhere in your website. So at the top of your blog post, in the middle of your blog post, you can also have it automatically added at the bottom of your blog post. And then what happens from there is your traffic reads your blog post. They come across the form, giving away some sort of offer. Uh, so example, let's scroll down here. I'm probably giving away, you know, I have specific landing pages set up for Pinterest. Uh, so I've got people I'm driving traffic to from Pinterest and they can download like a distance chart for their golf clubs or a practice routine or a seven day putting boot camp course. So create some sort of incentive that you're offering as part of, you know, the email form. So when they read the form heading, it says download my best 15 tips for buying real estate. If I was a real estate agent, somebody's going to put their name and email address in and now they subscribe to the form to get access to that freebie that you're offering. Boom, they become part of your email list. So in the last 30 days, you can go on to ConvertKit and look at you know, how many subscribers you're getting day by day. You can see these different forms they're subscribing to so I can keep track of which forms, which offers are doing best. Maybe my you know putting tips offer is doing better than my golf swing tip offer. So I can see, you know, split test some different ideas of what to offer as a free incentive to get them onto my email list. Once they're on your email list, you can set up automations here in the automation tab. So I can automatically subscribe them, for example, to one of my email newsletters so they get emails from me on a weekly basis that I've already pre-written. That way it's hands off. I don't have to manually send out emails to them. They go through my whole email system, getting these marketing emails sent to them once a week. And eventually those marketing emails promote products to them and they could buy and become customers. So that's where we set those up under sequences. We can also set up other automations like when they subscribe to a certain form, I can give them a certain grouping or a certain tag so that they become part of a specific you know, group that I can later remarket to. Like if I wanna keep all the putters, all the people interested in putting together, if I wanna keep track of all the people interested in the golf swing, maybe the mental side of golf, so I can group different people together with automations. If I wanna blast out an email to my entire list, let's say I'm gonna run a promotional sale, I can just hop over here to the broadcast tab, create an email blast that gets blasted out to my entire list. Or for example, in one of our videos, we talked about how to grow your website traffic through using broadcast emails. So every day when you put out a new blog post, you create a broadcast email and blast that blog post out to your email list saying, hey, here's a new blog post I just created. Go check it out. And that's how you can get repeat visitors back to your website, checking out your content. So ConvertKit is the software I've chosen. Again, you can use other softwares like Constant Contact, MailChimp. Um, there's other ones out there as well, but ConvertKit, I love just the dashboard. Again, it's easy to read uh, as far as learning how many subscribers you're losing each day, how many subscribers you're gaining each day. We can look at the total subscriber graph so you can see with time, my subscribers continually go uphill. We can set filters if we wanna segregate out different months or different weeks. So lots of data to look at on the email side of things. We can scroll down here and see total subscribers, average open rates, average click rates for your emails, how many emails you've sent. So lots of different data to look at in addition to creating forms, creating newsletter sequences, creating automations, and blasting out broadcast emails. Our next tool is switching gears a little bit. We're going over to social media marketing now. So with Pinterest, I drive a lot of my traffic to my website through Pinterest, as you saw here in the clicky analytics. When we looked at incoming domains, what's driving traffic, where is it coming from? Boom, Pinterest sending me 15,000 people in the month of May. Uh, so for in order to get a lot of Pinterest traffic, I use a tool called Tailwind. So I create these different pins on Canva so if we come back over here to Canva, this is where I create my different graphic design work. Uh, Canva is another free tool you can use. We can add to the list today of tools, but basically it's free. You go to canva.com, you pick the Pinterest template. I design a Pinterest image here that's a vertical tall image. I download it to my computer. Then I come into Tailwind. I upload that image into Tailwind. And a lot of times I'm uploading in bulk. So I might go create 30, 40 different pins for different blog posts in, the, in Canva download them to my computer, come here, upload all 30, 40 into Tailwind, and then I can add a custom description, custom links to different blog posts that match up with each of those pins that I designed. And from there, Tailwind takes over. Uh, they'll auto-publish so I can schedule my posts. So they'll auto-publish for me out to my different Pinterest boards. And then from there, I let Pinterest take over and market my pins out on the Pinterest platform, and I get traffic back to my website. 
So it's a hands-off way to, to basically grow my website traffic just using this automation tool called Tailwind. I'll link to it below in this video description if you wanna learn more about it. As far as getting organic traffic to your website or building you know, a stronger backlink profile, there's a tool called Ahrefs. You've probably heard of it, if not, it's a fancy, expensive tool that costs $79 a month, so it's gonna be out of the ballpark for some people, but if you have the budget to spend on it, you can also try it. They have a free trial option, I think seven bucks for seven days. You can get started. You can use this free tool for seven days, give it a try, get a lot of research and information done in that seven-day trial, and then you can cancel the subscription, or you can stay on and pay the 79 or the $99 a month for it. But an overview of what it does, so here's kind of the, what the dashboard looks like when you're signed in. So first you've got the Site Explorer tool. This is the one I use quite a bit. Uh, you can punch in any website. So first you can start with your own website. Type in your website uh, and then it shows you where it ranks in the overall total you know, population of websites. So a lot of mine are ranking you know, in the low millions still. I haven't broken the top one million websites yet, but we're getting close. You can also see your URL strength and your domain strength. And in order to get these stronger, you can build backlinks. So you can see here, like this website, Teespring, for example, they've got 29 million backlinks. So a backlink is just another website linking to you. That tells Google that if another website's linking to you, your website must be important. So the more backlinks you build, you can get stronger URL scores and domain scores. And then it also looks at how many referring domains are creating these backlinks. So you want to have a variety of referring domains. If you just have one domain that links to you a ton of times, that's not as powerful as having you know 30,000 websites linking to you. The more websites that link to you, the more authority Google thinks that your website has. If these websites are all agreeing to link to you, uh, that must mean your content's important, right? So you can get an overview basically up here. Uh, organic keywords, you can see how many keywords your website's ranking for. Again, this is similar data you're gonna find in your Google Search Console. Your Google Search Console is gonna be more accurate, but they do have some ability to track you know, what your rankings are for different keywords. So you can see your organic traffic and the value of that organic traffic as well. You can look at overviews of how you're doing over time in terms of your backlink profile. Uh, you can click to organic search to see how your keywords are going up over time as you rank for more and more keywords how much traffic you're getting over time. But the big thing you can do is you can go here into the backlinks tab over here and you can see all the different backlinks currently pointing to your website. Or if you punch in a competitor website, uh, you can see all the backlinks to their website and you can download as an Excel file all those domains and what pages they're linking to. So you have all that research and data on hand. And from there, what you can do is take those backlinks and you can actually reach out to those websites and say, hey, I saw you're linking to so-and-so. I also have a resourceful guide for you if you want to consider linking to it in the future. And that's one way you can build backlinks using this tool called Ahrefs by downloading backlink profiles of your competitors and trying to mirror them and go get those same domains and those same websites linking to you as well in order to build your backlink profile and get your domain scores better. And overall, it's gonna help boost you up the search results and the search engine so you can start getting more organic traffic coming in from Google. A few other ways to use the Ahrefs tool. You've got the Content Explorer if you wanna find viral content ideas so that you can have some new inspiration uh, for how to create new blog articles. You can also track keyword rankings similarly to how you have Google Search Console where you can watch your different keywords what your average ranking is, what your click-through rates are. With the Ahrefs tool, you can actually track a bunch of different keywords at one time, and you can get updated email reports sent to you so that as your keywords are moving up the rankings, you can see how you've done in the past week. So it's a little more organized than trying to use Google Search Console, uh, where you have to sit here and you know move back and forth between different date ranges. With Ahrefs, they'll literally send me like a monthly email summary where it'll show all the new keywords I'm ranking for and it'll also show keyword position changes. So I can quickly scan the list of keywords and it'll show me how many spots certain keywords have moved up or down. So I can see that my going back, editing those blog posts like we talked about earlier, trying to boost click-through rates. You know, when I add in new keywords and add in more information to make my blog articles longer in-depth guides, I can see how that pays off then by watching how they move up the rankings using that Ahrefs you know, feature that they offer. 
So there's lots of other features as well Ahrefs offers, but those are the main ones I like to use. I like to get my backlink competitor profiles so I can start reaching out to different websites to try to build backlinks. I also like to monitor my keywords over time to see how they're doing in the rankings, if they're improving, if, if my efforts of editing blog posts is actually paying off. Now a free alternative would be Uber Suggest if you don't want to pay the money for Ahrefs. You can come here and get keyword ideas of what to try to write blog content around, what to try to rank for. So you can just enter in information. So if I typed in women's golf, for example, and wanted to come up with some different article ideas to put on my golf website related to women's golf, we could just type that in. And then Neil Patel's tool, Uber Suggest, it's a free tool. It'll sit here and populate a bunch of different you know, ideas. So women's golf clubs, women's golf clothes, women's golf shoes, so it'll give me different content ideas, keyword ideas. It also has some different analysis tools built in as well if you want to get more specific with it. All right, so overall, those are the main tools that I'm going to highlight in today's video. I'm going to probably create a part two where I share some other tools I use, but pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis, I'm doing most of these tools. I'm logging into Clicky every once in a while to look over some different analytics, how many website visitors I'm getting, what pages they're going to, where they're coming from, what they're searching, where they're coming from location wise, as well as sources, you know, whether they're coming from Google, Pinterest, Facebook, advertising, email blasts I'm sending out. So that's just the overview tool I use Clicky for. Then we talked about Google Analytics and Google Search Console as a way to dive deeper into your website traffic to see how that's converting as far as click-through rates out on Google search results. And then also looking at conversion rates for once they're on your website, you know, are they actually becoming customers? Uh, and then we talked about building an email list. So you get all this traffic, you're monitoring all this traffic using these different analytic tools. But then you also want to make sure that traffic's turning into repeat visitors. And to get them into repeat visitors, you can come in and create an email list and start capturing them with email forms on your website. Once you've got all that traffic coming to your website and they're getting onto your email list, you can market to them by sending out sales emails, marketing emails to try to convert them into customers. I also talked about building traffic to my website through Pinterest and I use a schedule tool called Tailwind where we are scheduling our pins in advance to multiple boards so that I can try to rank for different types of pins and different articles I'm pumping out onto Pinterest. And then lastly, I gave you a couple keyword tools to research different information about your competitors keywords as well as keywords that you want to try to go after and target to get your website ranking in Google where you're then going to combine, you know, these keyword idea tools with the Google Search Console tool to see how you're actually performing once you write those blog articles and you try to to see how they're doing over time ranking for these different keywords. So try these different tools out, see how they help you building your website, your blog, getting traffic, getting conversions, building an email list, getting sales and customers. And overall, these are the main tools that you really just want to put your focus on and you should be able to build a successful online business with. Yo, check this out. So if you type in asknickfoy.teachable.com, asknickfoy.teachable.com, when you hit enter, it's going to open up my resource library. So I've been working on tons of training video modules and I put them together in these different courses. And you can go over here to asknickfoy.teachable.com and you can learn how to start a website that makes money. So this is called Profitable Blogger. You can also learn how to make money from social media like Pinterest. You can also learn real estate investing. So these are three ways I currently make money right now. I'm making six, $7,000 a month. I've already come out with a video showing you how I was making 1,400 a week a little while back. And we're on pace to eventually get to 10K a month passive income through websites, through social media, and through real estate investing. So these three methods combined, I created these three training courses. You can go here to asknickboy.teachable.com to check them out. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the inside when you enroll in them. Yo, before you go, make sure you are subscribed to the channel, Nick Foy TV. If you hover the lower right corner of your video right now, you're going to see the little red subscribe button. When you hover that, it's going to pop up that subscribe button and it would mean a lot. I already appreciate you gave me your time, your attention today. Uh, but if you could also hit that subscribe button, support the channel and uh, smash the like button as they all say in every YouTube video. So smash the like button, hit subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next video.